Hey, what's up everyone? It's me, Mr. Fine here, and I know you guys haven't heard from me in a while now. That is due to mostly school and personal projects that I am working on. However, I do want to come back on to YouTube to make content for you guys. So today we are going to be um, actually learning for once um, on how to script. So. I plan making a scripting series or lessons if you would like to call it that uh, on basically just beginner things for just programming in general and I don't really have anything planned out before my video so it may seem a little unprofessional but hopefully you can bear with me. Before I begin I would like to say that all the tutorials on my channel they aren't really most of them aren't great for live game production and the purpose behind them is not to have an exact copy and paste uh it's the concepts that are valuable within those videos if you've tried making a game with let's say a direct copy and paste of it it may not have worked well another reason for the game's failure is probably because the game doesn't have any form of system and it's completely hard labor which will result in a burnout please do not use those videos as a primary way to make a game to make a game you should be able to pretty much do anything you need to do without using any tutorials you're more than free to use the developer hub which is available um, by roblox and they provide a great documentation on all the things in Studio. Before we get started, um, if you don't know what Roblox Studio is or how to use it, I suggest you guys look on YouTube. There are plenty of tutorials out there with explanations on how to use Roblox Studio. So go ahead and check those out first. Now, uh, let's get started. So, um, most of you guys probably know what variables are and that's a good thing. Uh, but I think it's a bit important to cover the data types in programming. So in Lua, the data types, um, you have, well, a few common data types. And the first one you have is a number. Okay. The second one you have is a string. Now, okay, that's a global. Let's do this instead. All right. And then the third one you have is a Boolean. Now these are the most common ones. Now in other languages they have the some might require you to state the type right before stating the variable. Um, so for numbers they get a bit more complex. They get into floats and then doubles, which are more precise values. Um, booleans are, I believe they are just booleans, are true or false. And strings are just text. So uh, these are the three basic um, data types. Now there are more. There's also some uh, Roblox specific data types like vector 3C frames, but um, th to keep it general and keep it, you know, um, not too specific, we're just going to work with these three. So um, each of these all serve a purpose and you may not be able to think of a use case for them immediately. But during throughout programming your own game or project, you'll find the need to use them. Now, you might not need to define them, but you could with the new Roblox Lua U update. But um, it's important for you to read the output for errors because the output is going to be your best friend. It's going to tell you all about um, what's wrong. And at times it will tell you that it may expect the different data type compared to the one you provided. So that's really important. So let's let's try to do something. Um, I'm gonna try to make an error. So let's do print boolean um, plus string. So let's go ahead and try to run that. Now, uh, let's bring out the command bar. This will run that. So as you can see here, the script errored. Well. Not the script, but it, the command bar errored and it says um, attempt to perform arithmetic add on boolean and string. So this basically means I tried to add a boolean and string as you can see right here. This is what I did, right? So these are the type of errors you might get in game. 
or like in live production so you need to be able to read errors and that's going to be huge now we are going to cover many other topics but for now we're just co covering the basics so i think that um data types are one thing you should probably learn um and yeah so uh the next thing to talk about is variables so if you don't know what variables are here i already defined three variables um basically you know if you've done math before algebra variables are basically something that you can store a value in or at times you can even uh st create a function which is kind of like a variable but it's basically a variable that runs code so uh i want to keep this as simple as possible and not to uh, confuse you guys so i'm going to try to um dumb down the logic here so uh, right now we have three variables right one is called number so this is the name of the variable and this is the value so when I try to print number it will give me the corresponding value which is one so if I go ahead and just paste this in here you see that it prints one right and if I try to put let's say the string in here it will print high because that's what it's equal to so those are variables they come in really handy especially when um you have a variable that is very long or you just need access to something in the workspace so let's talk about um the workspace now so as you know roblox provides a bunch of tools for you guys to use in order to create a game and you can see that there are tons of tools and objects uh so let's add a part now i know a lot of tutorials start with um changing the color of a part right but um let's talk about something else for now so in roblox studio there are many objects all right so there's parts so these are just building blocks for greater buildings there's scripts so these guys um this is what you're going to need to run code there's also local scripts which i'll talk about in a moment as well um if you guys don't have these two um tabs open you want to head to view and you want to head to explore and properties and as you can see these are highlighted uh just press these and this should appear so um the explore is where you just select uh the objects and as you can see as i select objects the properties tab changes its contents um you can see that there are many properties in here, right? And from color to cast shadow to transparency. And if you've messed with Roblox Studio before, you know that these change um, the physical properties or other properties of the object. And this applies to all the other objects. So every object, they all have different properties and it's good to know these properties because you're when scripting you're going to be using uh the properties a lot you're going to be changing the properties a lot right and you're going to be doing a lot so let's talk about um let's say the transparency right now so let's make a script that changes the parts transparency so to start off um we want access well we want some form of reference to this part correct so the very first thing uh, I would do is create a variable. All right, let's start with a variable and then let's reference the part. So to get an object in this, um, in the Explorer, you can see that I started with game. So game, you can think about it like the parent of everything. And then after game, so game is invisible, but everything else in here, um, you can uh, get through dot and then the name of the uh, service right so if I wanted to access something in replicator storage I would do uh, local object equals game dot replicator storage then dot whatever I need to access uh, so we have um, reference to the part right which is good and now we want to change the transparency. So let's change the parts transparency. So you'll see that if I put dot here, um, there's a bunch of uh, 
it's it's basically an auto fill but you can see there's a bunch of things here and majority of these are uh properties but there are also events and I'll, I'll talk about events in the future but let's just go with these properties so transparency is what we're looking for so we're going to press enter on that and then let's set it to 0 0.5 which should make it um translucent so let's go ahead and just run so as you can see the parts translucent and that's that's pretty much it to the part transparency changing now uh back to data types uh remember that we mentioned that roblox has their own different data types as well as uh parts have their own properties so basically each of these property here each of these properties they have their own type of data that you need to give in order for it to change so transparency is obviously a number um but things like material uh you want to use roblox's enumeration or um what some people do is they just do this which is fine i guess it works but it's actually better to do something like this now i'm not going to go in depth with roblox's um enumerations and data types because we're just going to go over the basics so uh let's just look at let's ignore everything else but let's look at the um properties with a checkbox as well as a number so you can see that these are numbers this one has a checkbox and then we can we can also take a look at these so you can see that name equals part okay um parent equals workspace uh these are all checkboxes all right and these are also numbers, however, they are, you can see that they're in a format and that's because they have a data type as well. So we're gonna ignore those. So let's talk about these. Now, when programming, you need to be able to identify what data type it needs. So looking at this, if we move this part up, you can see that, well, you can't see it, but okay, um, cache shadow, what it does is that it basically uh oh there we go okay it basically gives the part a shadow and if we toggle it off you can see that the shadow goes away now whenever you have something you can toggle you probably want to assume that it's a boolean especially with a checkbox so this value is a boolean and to edit the property you just want to simply do part dot um cache shadow equals and then you just say true or you can say false so there are only there's pretty much only two values that you can as, uh, assign to this property which is true and false so anything you see with a checkbox so anchored can't collide and hopefully you guys know what these are i'm not going to go in depth what those are you guys will have to test it out yourself right um these you can only assign with true or false, which keeps it really simple, right? Um, the ones with numbers, similarly, this uh, you can only assign it with numbers, right? So transparency, we set it to 0 0.5 by doing this. Uh, you can do the exact same thing to reflectance, because as you can see, it's a number, right? Oops, just changing it. Um, Let's take a look down here. So there's no more numbers, which is unfortunate, but uh, there are other objects that might use numbers. Um, for example, this light, uh, you can see that brightness here is a number, so you can change it via script using, um, oops, I deleted the script, but you can do, you can uh, just simply change the property by assigning it a value of a numerical value. Now you can see shadows is a Boolean, enabled as a boolean so these you guys should be able to um at this point you guys should be able to assign values to these properties okay so let's talk about um uh declaring variables again so you can see that i've nested this so i basically parented this object under the part and what happens is that i can no, i can't get this object in the workspace because it doesn't belong well it does belong in workspace but it's not directly under workspace right it's under a object under workspace so 
um, to practice if you want to, you can practice uh, getting the objects, though it's pretty straightforward. So local point light equals game dot workspace dot part, right? So first of all, we want remember game is what we start with. Workspace goes here, right? And then part goes here. So now we have part, but we want to have um, a variable for this light here. So we're going to do dot, and then you can see that autofill comes in. You can do dot point light, right? So it's very it's very self-explanatory, very simple. Um, another thing you can do is you can do this. You can do local part. This is game dot workspace dot part. Okay. Now um, the point light here. We can also do that. So we can have two variables, and we can do part dot point light. And as you can see, it still uh, it still pops up in the octavo. This is because um, the part here is equal to this, right? Because we assigned it as a variable, and now we can also get the point light through uh, using this variable, and then we can get that point light. Now, what we want to do now is we want to um, learn the other way of getting uh, these objects in the workspace. So there's two ways. One is like so, right? And the other way is actually doing this. So this game dot workspace, and then if you do square bracket to do part, um, these two values would be the same. If we were to go ahead and do this equals part dot point light, these two values would be the same. Now you might be wondering why would you ever do this way? Because this way you got autofill, you got basically everything you need. So why would you do this? Well, the reason you would do this is because um, if you had a an object with a space in its name or some form of um, some form of name that's weird so like maybe it's a number you can see if I name it one two three right I can't I can't really do I can't really get it so part and then I can't do one two three you can see that it doesn't work right so the way to retrieve it would be like this right the other scenario would be a space so let's have one two three ASD so oops um, local light equals game dot workspace dot part dot point light I mean one two three ASD you can see that this doesn't really work out so the only way to get that object is to put a space like that and that would be the same as what we had before so that's how you use this another way you can do this is that if you had a value or a variable that had a string in it or a number um, for example local name of light equals one two three asd you can plug this in here so you don't need the string anymore right you can just put the variable in here and it'll be equal to this now um this is very useful especially um when you're working with modules which is a whole another topic that i'll talk about in the future but this is really useful uh for automated systems or systems that um that kind of it's semi-automated to the point where it's very helpful it reduces workload right and yeah so that's going to be it for the uh for the tutorial or lesson for today um i'm going to try to upload more but school my second semester just started so uh chances are it won't i won't have time but Hopefully this helped you a bit or understand programming a little bit. In the future, I'll go in depth with other topics such as um, client side, the server side, as well as the different types of scripts and what they are for, as well as modules and of course, um, just generally game development. So uh, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to let me know in Discord because I'm actually on Discord a lot. And if you guys have questions, go ahead and DM me on Discord as well. I like to help people out. You might find me in servers such as Hidden Developers or Row Devs, and sometimes I just chill there and help some people out. So uh, I'll see you guys next time.